Hey YouTube. Well, today I want to show you all this 2011 Nissan Leaf with 6,000 miles. This is the first one I've ever seen out here. Last time I saw a Leaf was on the highway a few months ago and at the 2011 New York Auto Show. Which they were offering test drives and I don't know why. I decided not to do it because it was quite interesting. Just seeing that car at the lower level. People were just flooring it. I know I heard tires screeching, surprisingly. But you can see the back end. Traditional Nissan styling. LED taillights. And as most of you shall know, this is a full electric car. No gas engine. Seems to have solar panels up here. Hmm. So let's do a tour of this leaf. This is all new to me. You can see the interior. Nice and bright. So let's start it up. You're not even going to hear a crank or anything. So if you want to hear a crank, you're just going to have to make one up as you push the button. It's push button start. Key fob is changed here. Traditional Nissan smart key. No, it's not a V8. Hmm. Interesting. Well, 53 mile range, so I could sit here and talk all day if I wish. Surprisingly, the AC is cold already. That's freaky. Well, this is going to be the quietest tour I've ever done. You're not going to hear an engine because it has none. Let me lower this fan. This AC is actually awesome. Now, Let's immediately get down to comfort. Let me adjust the seat right to where I like it. You can see the adjustment right there. Okay, actually go forward a little bit. No thigh support adjustments, just the back end of the seat you can tilt. Interesting. I would have wished for a little bit more thigh support, actually. Well, the seat itself is very cushiony. And the backrest also nicely bolstered. The seat itself, again, Comfortable, but I would have wished for more thigh support. That's quite disappointing. Very wide, lots of shoulder room. No complaints at all there. Legroom is quite good as well, very roomy, so a person of my height, I'm 6'1", won't have a problem in this car. Um, immediately, let's get down to interior quality. Tire dashboard is plastic. I'm sorry, many of you guys won't like this, but this clips off rather easily. Everything very snappy. Nissan habit nowadays. Again, this hollow, grainy, cheap plastic throughout the dashboard. Here in a center stack, this piano black finish. Oops, that was my fault. Center stack, it's piano black finish, fingerprint magnet. Hazards. Whee! Leafy. Radio. Well, head unit, everything here, tilts, exactly what goes in there, okay, seems like a SD card slot, ooh, crap, what the hell, well that's awesome, damn thing got lost in there, ugh, this sucks, so, if this thing drops and gets jammed in there, you have to dig in there and this thing won't tilt. That is badly designed. CD, you insert a CD, DVD, whatever you, whatever goes in there. Has XM radio. Brightness controls. Has Navi. Let me see if I can get it going. Okay, no SD card slot. We get your point. Doesn't want to show me anything right now. It has Bluetooth, climate control right below, and despite not having a running engine, it's an electric compressor, it is going ice cold right now. I'm loving it. Power outlet, tray, USB, aux jack, this huge thing just for a little teeny aux jack. Makes no sense. Again, everything here is cheap plastic, very grainy, and going back to the piano black finish here. 
Center console is a bit on the jiggly side, and storage in there really isn't that big of a deal. Lid itself also isn't that sturdy, but it is padded nicely. Very cushiony. The shifter. Should be in reverse right now. Ooh. Feels weird going back to park. Should be in park. Now, drive. Let me see if there are no cars coming. Hmm. This brake pedal feels so weird. It was almost to the floor. Whoa, this thing could tear its wheels. <laughs> this thing just wanted to launch. Definitely have to be careful. Oh, it has a backup camera, you can see. Is there an next time? Oh, that's very helpful. Because you really can't hear this car at all. So you're going back in reverse. That is so helpful. E brake again, it's electric. Gosh, I so wish I could just launch this car, see if it could just burn out. That would be so funny. There's a car coming. I wonder how fast this car is in zero to 60. I never saw those specs. Oh well. You guys heard that chime, and you can see. Glove box, it is damp, and it's quite large. You can see the owner's manual right there. Gaps, everything even for the most part. Seems like it. Now going up the fit and finish on the A pillar. Seems quite good. Eh, it's a slight gap. If you really want to nitpick right there, small little gap. Passenger side is a little bit better. Now, there is a gap on that pillar right there. That is obvious. That one is tight. So, yeah, that seat pillar is a bit sloppy. Headliner, it is rough. Coated with a generic paper towel, no padding whatsoever. Interior lighting. Now, this is where LED lights would have made sense because these are incandescent bulbs and they use more power, so that's not a very wise move. Same deal here in the center. This old 90s style light right here also could have used an LED instead of this incandescent bulb. Really goes against the look of this car. Holder for the sunglasses, average size, it is padded inside, so won't scratch your lenses. Sun visors, only a mirror, no vanity light. Coated with vinyl. Feels quite low rent too, even the strap here. Feels like that it feels like the type of material you'd find in a in a twelve thousand dollar subcompact with low quality interior materials. Same deal on the passenger side. Oh shit handles on only three of the doors and they are damped. Driver does not have it. Rearview mirror does have a garage door opener and may dim as well. I see a little sensor or a little indicator right there. So I could be mistaken, but that's what it appears to be. And also ruins efficiency. You can see right there also uneven gaps right here on the dashboard. Anyways, I already finished talking about that a long time ago. Steering wheel is nicely thick. It's bare. Radio controls, hands-free controls, cruise control, steering wheel only tilts, it is not telescope, trip computer adjustments, panel dim, again, vehicle info, you can see how everything fluctuates, stability control, this is where you plug it in, seems like it when you charge it, that's just an assumption. And I would assume that this is that backup chime that you heard. I would leave that on because it is quite useful for this quiet car which you cannot hear rolling. This is just the level of the lights, the headlamps. I assume they're HIDs they are just regular projectors. I'll have to check. I'll leave them on along with the fogs. Now, door panel on top. 
hard, cheap plastic, but this piece here, they coated it with vinyl, so that was thoughtful. Armrest also is padded. It is very cushiony and comfortable. It will be a dirt magnet, I know that. Rest of the door panel down here in this section is cheap plastic again, and you can see the seating adjustments. Back windows, front, driver window, auto up and down, power door locks, window lock, power mirrors. Let's check out the back seat, look under the hood, fuel filler, well, plug actually, the outlet. <laughs> and now, rear legroom doesn't seem to be too bad. Before I get to there, materials do carry over into the back seat when it comes to the door panel. Well, this changes. This is plastic, unlike up front, which is padded. Other than that, everything else is identical. The seat is a bit on the firm side, actually. And thigh support is just awful. Well, legroom really doesn't work for me. So if, if there's a person of my height, I'm 6'1", sitting up front, and if there's a passenger in back, you won't be that comfortable. Yeah. There's no armrest either. So... Yeah, the back seat really isn't that pleasant if the front passengers are tall. Seats do fold down, pull on this pin. And people say that I always mistake about the headrest not tumbling, but that just does not appear to be the case in here. I see that impossible. Just the design of it and the look of it does not look like a headrest that can tumble. And these are not latches for that to happen. So. Oh, that's the back seat. Not really that big of a deal. Here's the backup camera. And the cargo area. I assume that's for the charging. You can see how this goes. Looks like a gun. Quite interesting. Trigger! tire inflator, cargo light, and cover. Really, cargo won't be that good once you fold down the seats because you have this, this in the way, so. Yeah, seats folding down really won't be that helpful, or useful, I mean. But it's not that bad, considering the size of this car and its purpose. It does ride on 16-inch wheels. Rear disc brakes, surprisingly. <laughs> yeah. Take a look under the hood. Whoa, this prop bar was just hanging down like that? That sucks. It's funny to look at this electric motor. <laughs> they made it look like an, an engine with a valve cover and everything. Even though that's not what it is. But it's interesting. But the placement of that prop bar is quite stupid. If it's not placed correctly, it will come down as it just did. You saw the fox. You can see this is where you access charging ports. Here's the idea. Very simple stuff. I mean, I'm not a fan of the Leaf, but it's an interesting car. It must be neat to see this car roll in complete silence. But I would like to at least hear something, some kind of grunt. So, I can't do an exhaust view or anything like that, so... I'll just slide in pictures and talk a little bit more. Now, if I were to choose between this and the Vault... I don't know, I have mixed feelings. I think I would enjoy this car more than the Volt. I would have more trust in it. But the downside is, if you run out of power, you're screwed. You're stranded, basically. Versus the Volt, which you still have a gas engine to back you up. But I'm quite concerned with quality and everything else about the Volt. Battery, interior materials, 
overweight, touchy brakes on that car. Plus that one that I did had an oil leak. So I would put more confidence into this car. More so with the Fusion Energy coming up soon, which is supposed to compete against the Volt. So we'll see how that goes. But yeah, this car was quite interesting. I did not expect finding it today. So. Let me shut it off. Oh, this AC is spectacular. I forgot to talk about the wipers, which is intermittent speed. So, that's it for this 2011 Nissan Leaf.